Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Uh, this week, I'm going to break away a little bit from the uh, training uh, sort of resource we've been doing. We'll be giving a little bit of the EMS textbook each week, right? I want to break away a little bit this week. I'm going to do something here um, about ECG or EKG readings, and I call this 3x3 three three, uh, EKG because to me, um, these are three things that you can do when evaluating an EKG for your patient that should either keep you on track to where you're going or give you some signals that something else is going on with your patient that you need to look further, okay? Now remember, this, these are Monday Minutes, right? So these are pretty basic stuff, but it's important to know the basics, especially when we talk about reading ECGs. But at the same time, if you're used to reading an EKG a certain way, I don't want you to change your formula. Some people have a formula when they're reading their EKGs, right? Maybe you learned it in medical school. Maybe you learned it in a CME you took or some doctor told you how to read it. Maybe it's read the, is it the rate? What do the QRSs look like? Is there a hypertrophy? Is there a bundle branch block? All that type of stuff, right? But I want you to keep to your formula, but I just want to sort of hopefully, if you have a formula, to get you to keep in mind these basics that, again, will keep you on track even if you have your own formula of doing things, okay? So what do we talk about when I talk about the groups of three? And what I'm talking about here are your P waves, your QRS complexes, and, of course, your rate, which is, of course, going to relate directly to your P waves and your QRS complexes, right? So when we talk about these three things, of course, again, guys, this is not everything when you're evaluating an EKG, right? But I feel that these three elements and the three elements that go with each part of these kind of tie into the bigger aspect of reading an EKG, whether you're reading just a, a three lead or you're looking at a 12 lead, okay? These are those basic things that I think you've got to really focus in on and zero in on when looking at your EKG. So let's get into it here and talk about this for a bit, all right? Now, your P wave, of course, we know that it represents the depolarization of the atria, and that depolarization, it occurs as the impulse passes through the heart muscle tissue, right? So, if we have a P wave consistently and it's preceding the QRS complex each time, that usually is going to tell you that the SA node or that sinoatrial node is going to be uh, initiating that electrical impulse. All right, so now here is a quick image, and you can see the P wave, your normal looking P wave here, okay, for this EKG, right? This, of course, is a perfect example of an EKG, all right? So, but when you're looking at it for yourself and you get that EKG, you're, you're staring at that thing, that, right? You're looking at those the three things I'm talking about, right? Now, you got your three things, your P wave, QRS, and the rate. But then we're going to break it down just a little bit further. So we've got your P wave. And what are those three things within the P wave? Well, of course, we're going to make sure they're present. We, that's sort of a given, right? That doesn't really count as part of the three. We're, going to, we're not going to be looking at it if it's not there. But we want to make sure that they are there, right? We want to make sure that they're occurring regularly and do they all look similar, right? Um, we're going to be looking uh, at them as far as the QRS complex. Is there one with every QRX complex? Or do you see P waves that are bouncing around that don't belong there, right? There's no QRS before it or after it, right? So, and we want to look at the, the again, the regularity, okay? Um, and... When we talk again about the shape, I just want to mention too, are they smooth, are they rounded, are they upright in appearance? That's an important thing when we talk about the shape, okay? Um, so again, those are your three main things you want to kind of focus in on when we talk about the P wave, all right? Now, we move on to the QRS. Again, here goes that perfect QRS complex here in this image, right? But... We want to, of course, we, we know that the QRS complex, that's that depolarization of the right and left ventricles, right? But when we look at it, there's pretty much three questions you want to ask yourself, primarily looking at that QRS, all right, to kind of give some bells that'll go off for you that something's not right. One is, 
is the QRS complex Y, right? If it's greater than uh, 0.12 seconds wide, right? That might mean that, that the complex is coming from the ventricle, the ventricular in, in origin, right? And maybe it's narrow. Well, of course, we want it to be narrow, right? Like, like we're showing here, right? At, at 0.12 seconds, okay? And if that's happening, if it's, if, if it's less than 0.12, then it's probably coming from the, the supraventricular in origin, right? So, again, if it's wide, greater than 0.12, some bells should be going off to look a little further, right? If it's very narrow, less than 0.12 seconds, again, got to start looking at something else might be going on. We have to kind of, you know, look at other things in the EKG, what's happening with our patient, the complaints, things like that. And then the third thing are, is the QRS complex similar? Are each one similar in appearance across the entire EKG strip? All right. So those are the three key things you want to know about your QRS. So we've got our, our you know, the three points to look at for your P wave, and now the three points you want to look at in your QRS. Now, of course, there's so many things you can look at looking at your QRS. You know, the, the J point, the um, you know the the R wave, uh, the Q wave, uh, the segments between the P and the R. All this stuff counts, right? But what I'm trying to focus on again, these are Monday men is trying to keep this short, short and sweet, right? These are the basic things that, yes, if you see a wide QRS, you see a narrow QRS, let's start looking at other things. Let's start looking at things like, uh, you know, do you have every QRS looking the same? Uh, do you have a P wave, you know, before each QRS? Okay, all these things count. But again, this, uh, your quick Monday minutes, I want to focus in on the basics so that when you see something odd, you'll know what's going on. Because, I, and I've said this before in other, other Monday minutes too, guys, I know this is basic stuff, right? And I point out a lot of the normalcy that you might see in a patient, but you've got to know normal to know the abnormal, to identify that something else is going on, okay? You've got to know what normal looks like to be able to identify when something is not normal, okay? Now, the last thing uh, is the rate. And I thought about rate because this is important when you're looking at P waves and QRS. I, kinda, I wanted to tie it in to the QRS complexes and your, and your P waves, right? Because you, you've got to know your rate when you're looking at these things. When we talk about is there a P wave for every QRS, are they regular, right? Uh, the same as the QRS complexes. Is there a QRS, you know, um, you know, is, is it regular across your EKG strip? Are they similar in appearance? This is what I'm talking about, all right? So let's tie this in with the rate. Now, one of the most common methods, of course, is the six second method right probably the simplest way but it can be argued that this is not the most accurate way right but for, i think for us in the field it can be pretty accurate and we can use it as a basis for when we're treating our patient right because you talk about a heart rate 70 80 90 it's not gonna really make a difference for our patient right but you start getting into heart rates of 40 50 60 things like that right you're going to be able to be treating your patient much differently. Same thing if the if it's if it's very fast, right? So pretty easy. The six second count is again the simplest simplest way, probably the fastest way. Okay. Um, so again, give you that quick, accurate, fairly accurate. All right, and it doesn't matter. The good thing about the six second method as well is that it doesn't really matter if the heart rate is regular or irregular. You can get a pretty accurate count that way. So what you're doing here, you're, you're pretty much just calculating the, the rate, but you're looking at the number of QRX complexes in your six-second strip, and then you multiply that by 10. So, of course, it gave you three-second marks here, right? So you show your, your six seconds, your complete six seconds, right? You go ahead and, and add up your QRX complexes and then multiply them by 10, all right? So and that's your beat per minute. So here you can see you've got seven in that six seconds, would give you that 70 heart heartbeats per minute, right? Now, the next one I want to mention is that R to R method, right? You're looking at your, your two R waves and you're counting large boxes between those two R waves and then you're going to divide that by 300. So again, here, you've got your, you got four, four large boxes, right? One, two, three, and four. 
Divide that by, by 300 gives you a, pretty much a good approximate of 75 beats per minute. All right. The problem with this method is that it can be much more accurate. However, the rate has to be regular. Okay, if it's not regular, you're not going to get that accurate of, of a count on that. So keep that in mind if you use this method. Okay, now the last one real quick, and this is the one that I see a lot of people using. I don't really like this next one too much. Um, this is where you're counting the boxes, right? You're counting the squares. And this is similar to the R to R where, again, the rate has to be regular. Okay, but what happens is each box... All right, is this is kind of based on time where you've got one, you know, one box is 0.2 seconds, two boxes is 0.4, um, uh, things like you no, know, two, two, one big box is 2.2 seconds, one big box is 0.4 seconds, and on and on, right? So, what you're doing, you're starting on your R, all right, and then you're counting your big boxes. So, it's 300, and then, of course, the larger the, the more boxes you have, the slower the rate, okay? So, as you can see here on top. You've got your rate. One large box is 300, 150, 175, 60, 50. So you're kind of in between here. So your rate's around probably, I'm going to say, 68, 70 beats per minute. Okay, on this EKG. But again, this is something where the rate has to be regular. Okay? You can't have QSs all over the place and P waves bouncing all over the place. The rate's got to be regular. Okay? Uh, I don't like this one because I don't like all these odd numbers floating around. I'd rather use just the uh, uh, large boxes and divide that by 300 or use the six second strip method. Okay. So those are the three ways to go ahead and get your heart rate. There are there's a few more with that as well. You can use calipers. You can use other different ways you can, you can get the patient's heart rate. The bottom line, guys, on this is that this is the basic way of counting your heart rate. So now, if you're looking at these three things, your P waves, your QRS complexes, and your rate, if anything is off where the rate's too high, your QRS complexes aren't aren't uh, uh, regular in size, they're either too narrow or too wide, they're upside down, um, you know, you got a, maybe a PVC thrown in there, that, you know, all this stuff, all your P waves, maybe they're not round, rounded, maybe they're not uh, upright. Maybe some of them are inverted, right? Maybe there isn't one before each QRS. So looking at these three things, if any of these are not matching up, that's when you got to say, hey, something else is going on with this EKG. Let me look further. Maybe that's going to bring you to do a 12 lead. Maybe it's going to bring you to monitor the EKG a little bit further. Maybe it's going to bring you to ask more uh, targeted, clinically appropriate questions to your patient, right? So this is all the type of stuff that we have to think about when reading EKG. There is such a wealth of information out there and so many different ways that you can come at this that it's hard to cover it in a short Monday minutes, but I'm hoping that this is going to, again, get you more focused so that when you see an irregularity, the bells are going to go off because you know what normal is, right? Again, you got to know normal, to, to recognize the abnormal, right? All right, so let me end it there, guys. I'm not going to keep hopping on this again. Basic stuff, right? But sometimes we need that quick basic refresher, and we need to know the basics in order to be great clinicians out there and get to that advanced stuff and really understand the advanced stuff, right? doesn't help us to do a 15-lead uh, EKG on somebody, right, with posterior, right side, all that great stuff if we don't know the basics, okay? Now, if you struggle with the basics or maybe you're starting out reading EKGs and you want to really get a great refresher on how to read EKGs, I don't know if you know this or not, but I've got this great EKG resource over on the website. Um, it's uh, pretty much, a, I call it the ultimate EKG guy because to me, it really does narrow down all these things here, the basis of EKG reading, the characteristics of an EKG, uh, understanding the rhythms, uh, Understanding polarization, depolarization, repolarization. Again, all about those P waves. Okay. Uh, goes over all the 24, about 24 or so uh, of the most popular EKG rhythms, including what you're going to see looking at things like left and right hypertrophy and COPD. Okay. 
Um, and of course, examples of these EKG strips as well. And I've also have a couple of bonuses with this, which is a five uh, interactive uh, cardiology module on, on here as well. And also a great uh, 300 page downloadable ECG resource that you can look at that really goes in depth into even more advanced stuff that I think you'll find useful as well. So if you're interested in this stuff, guys, you want to get some more great understanding. And again, this is going to really help you master those basics of EKG recognition, right? And again, can't go on to those 12 leads and everything else. And start looking at, you know, access deviation and scarbosa and all these fancy words, unless you know the basics, right? So go ahead and click this link for details. There's a lot more information about this over on the website. Uh, and there's also a link in the, in the notes below. So you can go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, again, I hope you enjoy these Monday Minutes. If you have some of your own, be sure to send them over to me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. I wanted to hear what you like to see here on Monday Minutes. And also, uh, you know, let me know what you think about them. Do you like them? you hate them? You're indifferent? They're too long, too short? I want to hear that information as well. So let me know about that, guys. As always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours in the Monday Minutes. Stay safe. <laughs>